Good morning all. Today I thought I'd do a teardown of this. Uh, it's going to be a one-way teardown because this is a pretty horrible little device really. It's an electricity display device and the other half of it is hanging off my uh, electricity cable. So that's up here. It consists of an inductive transformer type thing on the incoming live cable and then this transmitter unit uh, which transmits on, I can't remember what wave band it is, I'll try and find out, to the display device. The transmitter takes two AAA batteries in there, and unfortunately so does the receiver, and that's really its major failing. If this had double A's, um, it would last that much longer, and it would actually be sort of fairly useful. But because the batteries run out so quickly, um, it's a pretty useless device. I'll stick some batteries in and we can see how bad the user interface is. So let's use a couple of uh, these Recyco rechargeables. After all, this is a green product, an eco product. Hello, it says. Uh, the time it says is 10 p.m. Now this is one of my bugbears with this sort of device. You have to set the time first. Um, I mean, these days, do you really have to set the time on things? Well, yes, you do, because, you know, it's not connected to the internet. Now, I can't remember how the user interface works on this. Uh, pounds, 1699. Kilograms, carbon dioxide, kilowatt hours. I don't know what I'm doing. I've got a feeling you have to press and hold green to start the process going. Well, that says volts, 212. 100, 400. Oh, I think you have to just wind the voltage up to 240. Green, is it? Uh, not bothered about carbon dioxide just for the moment. 14p per uh, unit of electricity, I think, is correct. An alarm at 5 kilowatts. Fair enough. Uh, alarm off. Ah, here we are with the time thing. So what's the time? 11.51. Oh, at least you can go backwards. So once you've done all that, <laughs> now I've got to do day month here. Yeah, I can't even remember what the date is, so uh, I'll do that now. Yes, it's the 30th of December 2015. Is that it? Yes, we've cycled around. I think that's it. I think you press this one now. Well, I think that's it. So now let's put some batteries in the transmitter. So a couple more green batteries. And then uh, I'll put this, uh, how's that go? Wrong cover. I'll put this back on the uh, inductive transformer thing. I think you have to press that button. I've got a feeling in order to make the connection between these, you've got to press and hold left. I have a vague recollection of that. Yes, yeah, so that's now flashing link 0 kilowatts. Yeah, so if I plug this into the uh, transformer unit, that should start transmitting. And uh, yes, that's starting now to receive the uh, information from the transmitter. And it says that our, our whole house usage at the moment is uh, 660 watts. I think the TV is on, that's probably most of it. Uh, so yes, that does actually work. Now, the manual for this is in my tin of manuals for useless bits of stuff. But I mean, it could take me a while to find it because... Uh, well, there's a lot of stuff in here, so I'm not sure I'm going to bother. I seem to have remembered the uh, user interface as much as I need to. Now, this thing doesn't actually work very well with nickel metal hydride batteries. It's complaining there, that symbol top right is saying that the transmitter battery is low. And periodically, it's also complaining that the battery in this unit is low. So you really need to use alkalines, otherwise you just keep getting these battery low warnings. Well now I've just taken the batteries out and lost the clock settings, uh, but I'm going to press and hold the left button and just see whether I can pick up the uh, link again. Yeah, it says link. And there it is again, 655 watts, 0 0.655 kilowatts. Now it strikes me that this sort of device would be so much better implemented these days as um, a reasonably intelligent transmitter unit with a fair amount of memory and then a Bluetooth module, and you would uh, run an app on your phone, and then you'd have a much better user interface than this black and white LCD and four buttons. You'd have, you know, full keyboard and color screen and so on. 
but uh, maybe I'm a bit ahead of my time with that sort of idea. Well now, I have found the manual for this, and uh, inside it says that the transmission frequency is 433 megahertz. So that's one of these uh, licensed free bands. Uh, I think the other one is 315, something like that. Well now, there are no visible screws, so I think this is just held together with clips. So I think the only way this is going to work is to try and lever this thing out. And uh, I think I saw some pillars, so I think it does have screws, but I've got a feeling they're behind this panel. And there they are. Now, the trouble is, if this comes off, it's never going to go back on again, is it? Right, there are the screws. Let's take them out. Let's get these four screws out. Looks like them is provision for six, but they didn't actually fit. Six. Right. And in Side is that? Uh, well, it looks like a single chip processor. What's that? Memory, possibly. Up there, uh, almost certainly a wireless module. The antenna is this white wire running down here. This pair of wires goes to the battery compartment. And then under the processor board, it uh, looks like there's a keyboard and display circuit board. So let's take the processor board off. Hmm, well no, that seems to be actually uh, a processor and display board and the other little board at the front is just for the four buttons. So now my guess is that this uh, microcontroller is one of these ones that has built-in LCD drive capability. Let's just see if we can get the part number of that. Well, now this chip is strangely named Sino Wealth. Hmm, I think they're being a bit optimistic there. Um, it's an SH79F162P, is that? No idea what that is. Uh, down here is an Atmel 24C16, so that's indeed a memory. And I just spotted over here, under that blob of hot glue, there's a crystal, that's a standard clock crystal, uh, 32768 kilohertz, or is it 32.768 kilohertz? Anyway, you divide by uh, 32768, what's that, 2 to the power of 15, and you get 1 hertz for the uh, real-time clock. So there's nothing really uh, stand out, unexpected inside the receiver unit, just processor, display, and buttons. Um, let's take a look inside the transmitter unit. Hmm, this thing's uh, a lot more visible without that uh, shiny front panel on. Am I uh, starting to have second thoughts about uh, throwing this thing away? No, I must do it. Right, the transmitter just has three fairly accessible screws. So that's a bit easier to do. This thing's lost the link now because the transmitter's gone away. It shows that the transmitter obviously doesn't transmit that often. I think it's uh, every 10 seconds or so from what I can tell. Right. Oh, similar style of wiring. Another microcontroller, I suppose that is. Three sockets here, really strange, because you can plug the uh, inductive transformer thing into either of those sockets. I wonder if they're all in parallel. I'll take a look at that. Uh, there's the uh, transmitter module for 433 megahertz. Well, no, it seems that the uh, three sockets here run up three lines onto three of the pins of this uh, connector. So it's possible, I'm not sure whether this is a microcontroller now, it, it might even be a, a special purpose chip for doing precisely this, uh, monitoring the um, uh, electricity going through a transformer. But I'm wondering whether now this unit can actually uh, monitor three transformers. Ah, three phase possibly, that's what that's for. Maybe that's for three phase. Yeah, that's a possibility. Um, well, not much to say about that. I will take this board out. And uh, on the back of here, we've got the button pad there for the little push button. That's to sort of initiate transmission. Uh, red LED, which I seem to remember came on earlier, and a couple of electrolytics. But yes, I think this is probably a dedicated chip. Let's just get in on that uh, number. Uh, it's an F9222, 
I would have thought 917, I don't know, is that the date perhaps? Let's look up the F9222. Well, I can't find any uh, data on this F9222T, so it's obviously uh, either a microcontroller. There are no obvious clock components here, so it's either running with an internal RC oscillator, or it's a dedicated um, mains detector type device uh, with possibly uh, three or four inputs for uh, three or four different channels. So let's have a look at the final piece of the jigsaw, which is this um, inductive loop type uh, transformer device. I'm just wondering if there's any active stuff in here. It's a very nicely made ferrite that completes itself when you close this over your uh, electricity cable. This just ends in a small uh, DC jack. I'm just trying to think how to get this apart. I think it's these clips. Yeah, that seems to just be pushing out. And that should uh, come away. Ah, yes, right. Ah, okay, and there's the other half with the transformer. Hmm. What have we got on there? No active components by the look of it. Just um, transformer winding. Not sure how many... Uh, whether there's a primary and a secondary, or whether this is just simply one winding, probably just one winding, I'd have thought. Yes, I think you can see that there's uh, enameled copper running down to this pin, but nothing there. And if I flip it over again, a piece of enamel copper wire running down to that corner pin, but not this one. So I think it's just a single winding, which comes down to here, uh, goes to the uh, red and white wires and uh, ends up on this plug but it's very nicely made yeah that's quite nice so the question is do I chuck this out um, I mean I don't like the uh, horrible user interface on the receiver uh, the screens better with the uh, front off Although I seem to be able to remember the sequence of buttons you push, despite the user interface being pretty appalling. Um, it works better off alkalines than nickel metal hydrides. But I suppose the biggest issue with this is that you can't extract the data, and it does hold quite a lot of data. It holds weeks, months uh, worth of data in that, um, in that little 24C16 chip. But you can't get it out, so you can't get it out to graph it or put it onto Excel or anything like that. Um, it would be much better if you could, if this had Bluetooth, perhaps, and you could uh, talk to a phone, then yes, it would be a lot better. So I've connected the uh, transmitter back up to my uh, electricity incoming cable, and I've got a big fan heater here, so I'm going to switch that on. So that's drawing a kilowatt. And blowing nice warm air at me. Oh, it feels like the Mediterranean. So this thing does have this long update uh, or time. And so yes, that's gone up to 1.6 kilowatts. So I've added about uh, 1.1 or 1.2 kilowatts by turning the fan heater on. But it is nice and warm. So I don't know. I mean, do I keep this or do I uh, chuck it away? I think I'll let you guys decide. Cheerio.